Dengue is a flu-like illness spread by the bite of an Aedes mosquito infected with the dengue virus. The Aedes mosquito can breed even in a small amount of water accumulated in any container-like object. Severe headache, pain behind the eyes, nausea and vomiting, high fever with two or more of the following symptoms, severe muscle and joint pain, a rash on the skin, Consult a doctor and do as advised. If advised hospital admission, do so immediately. If advised home-based care, take plenty of fluids, nutritious food and paracetamol for fever and pain. Aedes mosquitoes bite through the day. Biting intensity is highest two hours after sunrise and two hours before sunset. Apply insect repellent throughout the day. Use household insecticide, aerosol, mosquito coils and vaporizers. Sleep under a mosquito net even during the day. Use screens on windows and doors to stop mosquitoes from entering. Wear long-sleeved and light-colored clothes. Prevent mosquito breeding in and around your home, your workplace, and even public places. Dengue can and must be prevented. The Aedes mosquito spreads the deadly dengue virus. It only needs a small amount of water to breed. If we don't stop it, the danger begins. That's why it is so important to get rid of stagnant water. Drains should always be kept clear of leaves and silt. To ensure water is flowing, stored items like unused pots must be checked weekly. Pails, including pail rims, should be drained and kept dry at all times. There are also other places we may not suspect that could collect water, so we need to look out for danger. Water features should always have running water and it's a good idea to introduce guppies or other fish that will eat up any mosquito larvae. Dish rack trays should be emptied daily. By fighting dengue as one, we can stop its dangers at once. Viruses are a large group of viruses. They consist of a core of genetic material surrounded by an envelope with protein spikes. This gives it the appearance of a crown. Crown in Latin is called corona, and that's how these viruses get their name. There are different types of coronaviruses that cause respiratory and sometimes gastrointestinal symptoms. Respiratory disease can range from the common cold to pneumonia, and in most people, the symptoms tend to be mild. However, there are some types. The 2019 novel coronavirus was first identified in China. 
It initially occurred in a group of people with pneumonia who'd been associated with a seafood and live animal market in the city of Wuhan. The disease has since spread from those who were sick to others, including family members and healthcare staff. There are many cases at present, and the disease has spread within China and also to a number of other countries. COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a new coronavirus introduced to humans for the first time. It is spread from person to person, mainly through the droplets produced when an infected person speaks, coughs, or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby. These droplets are too heavy to travel far in the air. They only travel approximately one meter and quickly settle on surfaces. This is the reason person-to-person -person spread is happening mainly between close contacts. The exact time that the virus can survive on surfaces is not yet known, so it is wise to clean surfaces regularly, particularly in the vicinity of people infected with COVID thing or sneezing. Cover your mouth and nose with the bend of your elbow or use a disposable tissue. If a tissue is used, discard it immediately into a closed bin. The most effective way to prevent the spread of the new coronavirus is to clean your hands frequently with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. This will eliminate the virus if it is on your hands. Stay healthy and prevent the spread of COVID-19. In poliomyelitis, also called polio, Polio refers to the polio virus, which is an enterovirus that invades the intestines. And myel refers to the spinal cord, which is affected in the disease. And itis refers to inflammation. So poliomyelitis is an enteroviral disease that first enters the body through the intestines, but then spreads and causes nerve injury in the spinal cord. Former U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt contracted polio when he was a baby, and it left him wheelchair-bound. By the 20th century, the world suffered frequent outbreaks in which otherwise healthy people were unexplainably stricken by this mysterious condition. As scientists scrambled for answers, the disease was reaching epidemic proportions. In 1908, fear found a name in polio. By the time science declared its viral and contagious nature, word of poliomyelitis was spreading as fast as the virus itself be remembered for the spread of polio in epic proportion. People were urged to avoid crowded areas. Say alone reported 60,000 cases in 1952, 21,000 of which were paralytic. Hospitals overflowed with polio victims encased in iron lungs. Parents and children were separated during long quarantine periods. A viral infection uh, that can cause paralysis. It usually affects children, and early on it was more common in the mid and upper socioeconomic groups. The first uh, epidemic of polio in the United States was in 1916, and at that time there were about 27,000, mostly children, who were paralyzed. After that, almost every single summer there was an outbreak of polio, and by 1952 there were almost 58,000 uh, cases in a summertime. The virus uh, enters the body through the mouth, and then it goes into the gastrointestinal tract where it multiplies. And from there it spreads into the bloodstream. And unless the virus is neutralized in the bloodstream, it can spread on into the nervous system, into the spinal uh, fluid and up into the brain. At first, uh, it's pretty innocuous uh, seeming. A child presents with a, a runny nose or complains of a sore throat. Uh, and then, uh, in a matter of time, spikes a very high fever, breaks out in a drenching sweat. And then these terrible electric shocks begin. You can protect your baby from harm. When your child is very young, serious diseases can make them extremely sick and the effects can last for years. You can protect your little one from these serious diseases by immunizing them on time. In conclusion, no matter where you are, there's always have a risk for your health. Just to make sure you always get a first treatment when you get a symptom of serious disease with a specialist. Remember this word prevention is better than cure.